It is R and B week here on Wake Up Central, and today we're taking a trip to the past and just down the street. Back in the day, the Dreamland Ballroom was the place to go to see acts like Louis Armstrong, Ella Fitzgerald, and Etta James. Ashley King took a tour of the historic venue and learned more about what's being done to restore it to its former glory. Hundreds of thousands of people drive down Interstate 630 every day, but most never realize they're passing a piece of cultural history. At the corner of 9th and State Street, just a few blocks from THV 11, you'll find Taborian Hall in a Dreamland Ballroom. Built sometime between 1916 and 1918, the building was home to the Arkansas chapter of the Knights and Daughters of the Tabor. They were a fraternal group like the Mosaic Templars. Matthew McCoy is the executive director of Friends of Dreamland, and for the last three years, he's immersed himself in the venue's rich history. The building was a part of the Black Business District, known at the time as The Line. During World War I, it became a service club and a USO for thousands of black soldiers. They'd host things uh, for the soldiers up here, you know, traveling, you know, bringing in musical acts for them, because um, tons and tons of black soldiers were being trained at Camp Robinson in North Little Rock. After World War II, the hall transformed into one of the city's most popular nightlife spots and became a regular stop on the Chitlin Circuit. Which was a, a chain of music venues that ran through the southern United States that were uh, known safe performance halls for, for, for blacks traveling through uh, the South. So from um, Houston, St. Louis to Memphis, this was the stop This here. was the stop in Arkansas. So this was the only one in Arkansas. And it was one that welcomed music legends. B.B. King, Ella Fitzgerald, Louis Jordan, Al Green, you know, who were both Arkansas uh, natives. Etta James. She I sang mean, at last on that stage. Which, I mean, yeah, that's amazing. Very likely. What an influence on those that had an interest in music, you know, mm -hmm. to see these talented artists yeah. stop here and play. I think, and I think a lot of time, you know, you had a lot of people like Cab Calloway and Duke Ellington had specific band members that they would travel with, but I'd also pick up local artists. But as the city and times changed, business began to dwindle and the building was eventually abandoned. And for two decades, a piece of music history was forgotten. But in 1990, Matt's mother, Carrie, bought the venue and saved it from destruction. I bought the building in 1990 and she put a roof on it. She put floors on it. It was it was basically just a brick box uh, when she bought it and, uh, and it has spent a long time getting it up to code. She used the first floor for her business, Arkansas Flag and Banner. She dreamed of a eventually restoring the whole building. She still looks at old pictures of herself and is like, who is that crazy lady who bought that building and did all this stuff? <laughs> with with work, like half I a mean, wall. I feel so privileged to be able to work with her on it. And it's only a matter of time before that dream becomes a musical reality. Yeah, I can only imagine just looking out over that, you know, empty stage right now and that empty floor. It's fun to imagine it being filled I know, it's, with that it's, music. And when you put music in here, I mean, something comes out of the walls. You can, something electric. Matt says they hope to have the ballroom finished by next year, but if you want to check it out before then, you can find tour dates and times on the Dreamland Ballroom Facebook page. Tomorrow we're talking with two local artists who are making a name for themselves right here in Arkansas.